Hey guys, this is Mr. Millings, and in this video, we are going to learn about complete ionic versus net ionic equations. So, if you remember in an earlier video, we learned about precipitation reactions, and we said that anytime you have an aqueous ionic compound reacting with another aqueous ionic compound, and it produces a solid material over here, then that is going to be a precipitation reaction. So anytime you have an ionic compound, that is to say a compound where you have a positive ion bonded to a negative ion that is aqueous, reacting with another ionic compound that is positive ion bonded to a negative ion that is also aqueous, and it produces a solid material here of some sort, then that is going to be a precipitation reaction. And from precipitation reactions, we can also write what are called complete ionic equations and net ionic equations. So if we take a look at this chemical reaction first, what we have in this beaker right here is some silver nitrate. And when we put silver nitrate in a solution of water, that is to say, when we make this aqueous, what ends up happening to an ionic compound when it's aqueous is it dissociates in water. It dissociates. It breaks apart in water. Okay, so to dissociate means that it's going to break apart into the two ions that make it up. So in this water here, we're going to have silver ions floating around with some nitrate ions. And same right here, we have an ionic compound that's aqueous. And so when you put potassium chromate in water, it's going to dissociate also. It's going to break apart into the two ions that make up that ionic compound. And in this water right here, we're going to have potassium ions floating around along with some chromate ions. And so when these two mix together, when you, pour, when you pour this into this beaker right here, what you're going to end up with is this material right here. You're going to end up with some silver chromate, which is an insoluble mass that does not dissolve in water. And you're also going to end up with some potassium nitrate that is dissolved in water. So you're going to have some free floating potassium ions and some free floating nitrate ions as well. So we have a precipitation reaction right here. And so from this, we can create what is called a molecular equation. Okay, so in a molecular equation, a molecular equation shows the full formula for each substance involved without reference to a substance being ionic or molecular. So if we take silver nitrate, and react it with potassium chromate, K2CrO4, dissolved in water AQ and dissolved in water AQ. It's going to produce, if we take a look here, potassium nitrate AQ, and it's going to produce silver chromate solid. This is the precipitate right here, right? This is going to be your precipitate. And then if we balance the chemical equation, what we end up with is our molecular equation right here, which states that two moles of silver nitrate react with one mole of potassium chromate to produce two moles of potassium nitrate and one mole of this precipitate here, silver chromate. So this right here is our molecular equation. And from this, we can come up with what is called a complete ionic equation. In a complete ionic equation, it's going to show you how all of the aqueous ionic compounds dissociate in water and how a precipitate does not. So if we take a look right here, we have uh, two moles of silver nitrate that are dissolved in this water right here. So what ends up happening when you put this stuff in water is it's going to dissociate. It's going to break apart into two moles of silver ions that are floating around in that water and also two moles of nitrate ions that are going to be floating around in that water. Also, if we take a look right here, if we put this in water, it's going to dissociate. And we're going to end up with two moles of potassium ions floating around in that water. And we're going to end up with one mole of chromate ions that are dissolved in that water. Okay, so if we take a look on the product side, what we end up with is, or are rather, we're going to end up with two moles of potassium ions, right? We're going to end up with two moles of potassium ions because this is aqueous, it's going to dissociate in water. And we're also going to end up with two moles of nitrate ions that are also going to be dissolved in that water, aqueous, aqueous. And then if we take a look right here, we have this substance called silver chromate, which is our precipitate. And that is, sol uh, that is our solid material, that is our precipitate that is insoluble in water, that is not dissolved in water, it stays together and it's not going to dissociate, so it stays together like this. So this is our complete ionic equation here. It shows how all the aqueous 
uh, ionic compounds dissociate in water and how a precipitate does not. And from this, what we can come up with is a net ionic equation. In a net ionic equation, it's going to show the dissolved ions that are directly responsible for the formation of the precipitate. All other ions are referred to as spectator ions and are not included. So if we take a look at this complete ionic equation, what two ions are directly responsible for the formation of this silver chromate precipitate here? Well, that is going to be your silver ions right here. And that is also going to be your chromate ion right here that are going to be directly responsible for the formation of this precipitate silver chromate. And so all these other guys right here and right here and right here and right here are going to be called your spectator ions. These are all called spectator ions. They're just kind of watching the chemical reaction take place from the side and they're called your spectator ions. And whatever you have on the reactant side, if you have that exact same thing on the product side, those are going to be your spectator ions. For example, we have two, two moles of NO3 minus here. We have two moles of NO3 minus here. We have two moles of potassium ions here. We have two moles of potassium ions here. So these can be left out of the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation only shows the dissolved ions that are directly responsible for the formation of the precipitate. So if we take a look, we have two moles of silver ions in solution that are going to react with one mole of chromate ions in solution to produce our precipitate right here, which is silver chromate. So what we end up with is a molecular equation, a complete ionic equation, and a net ionic equation. So now let's take a look at a couple of examples. We'll try these out on our own, and hopefully you get the hang of it. And in this example, it says, using the solubility table provided, write the molecular equation, the complete ionic equation, and the net ionic equation for the following word equation. So it says that barium chloride solution reacts with sodium sulfate solution to make solid barium sulfate and aqueous sodium chloride. So we have to write the molecular equation for this word equation first. So let's go ahead and do that. Barium chloride, we know barium is a two plus ion and that chloride is a Cl minus ion. So we're gonna need two of these chlorides. And it says that this stuff is aqueous and this is gonna end up reacting with sodium sulfate. Sodium we know is Na with a positive one charge and sulfate is SO4 two minus. And so we're gonna need two of these sodium ions to balance out the or cancel out the negative two charge of sulfate. And it says that this too is aqueous. And this stuff here, once they react together, this is going to end up producing solid barium sulfate. So barium is Ba2 plus. Sulfate is SO4 two minus. And it says that this stuff here is solid. And if we look at our solubility table, here is barium, here is sulfate. And if we look at where they intersect, it, barium sulfate is in fact insoluble. This is the precipitate. And it's also going to end up producing sodium chloride, Na plus, and chloride Cl minus that is soluble in water. All right, so here is our molecular equation. And if we take a look, let's see here, we have two chlorines over here. And so now we have two chlorines over here. And let's see, we have two sodiums on the right, two sodiums on the left, one barium on the left, one barium on the right one sulfate ion on the left and one sulfate ion on the right. So our chemical equation is now balanced. And so this right here is our molecular equation. And molecular equations typically don't have the ionic charges here. We just use these to figure out what the chemical formulas of all the different compounds were. So here is our molecular equation. So from this, what we can come up with is our complete ionic equation. So remember, the complete ionic equation shows you how this stuff is going to dissociate in water, this stuff is going to dissociate in water, and how this stuff will dissociate in water. So if we write our complete ionic equation, it looks like we are going to end up with Ba2 plus in water reacting with two moles of chloride when you put this in water it's going to break apart into two moles of chloride ions dissolved in water reacting with two moles of Na2 I'm sorry Na plus ions 
dissolved in water. And SO4, two minus ions dissolved in water. And this is going to end up producing, I might run out of room here, we're going to end up with BASO4 solid. And we're going to end up with two moles of Na plus Aq plus two moles of Cl minus Aq ions. So there we go. We have our complete ionic equation here. It's pretty long, but that's what's happening. This is going to break apart into these two species here. This is going to dissociate into these two species here. This is going to stay together right here, and this is going to dissociate into two moles of sodium ions and two moles of chloride ions. So let's take a look at what we have on both sides of this arrow here that are the same. It looks like the chloride is the same, right? We have two moles of chloride over here, and we have two moles of chloride over here. It looks like we have two moles of Na plus Aq over here, and we have two moles of Na plus Aq over here. So we can leave these out of the net ionic equation. And what we end up with is the rest. We have Ba2 plus Aq reacting with SO4 2 minus Aq. And this is going to end up producing BaSO4 solid. Or our precipitate barium sulfate. So here is our net ionic equation. Here is our complete ionic equation and here is our molecular equation. And these guys right here are going to be called your spectator ions. Your spectator ions right here. All of these guys are called spectator ions. They're just kind of watching as the other ions form this precipitate right here. Let's take a look at another example. All right, in this last example, it says that aqueous sodium chloride reacts with aqueous silver nitrate to produce aqueous sodium nitrate and an insoluble silver chloride precipitate. So let's first write the molecular equation. It says sodium chloride, NaCl, right? NaCl, right? This has a positive one. This is a negative one charge, and it says it's aqueous. This is going to end up reacting with aqueous silver nitrate. We know silver forms positive one ions. We know nitrate is negative one. And it says that this is aqueous. And this is going to end up producing, if we take a look, aqueous sodium nitrate. Sodium is Na plus. Nitrate is NO3 minus. And it says that this stuff is aqueous. And it's going to produce insoluble silver chloride precipitate. Silver chloride, silver is Ag plus 1, chloride is Cl minus 1, and it says that this stuff is insoluble. And if we look over here, we can see that silver, and then we go over to chloride, which is right here, where they intersect, we can see that, yes, that is not dissolved in water, or it does not dissolve in water, so there we go. And so now we'll make sure that our chemical equation is balanced, and it is. So here is our molecular equation. And from this, we can develop a complete ionic equation, right? So what's going to happen to this NaCl when we put it in water? It's going to dissociate into Na plus ions that are dissolved in that water and chloride ions that are dissolved in that water, right? What's going to happen to this when we put it in water? It's going to dissociate because it says it's Aq. It's going to dissolve and dissociate into silver ions dissolved in that water plus nitrate ions dissolved in that water. And this is going to end up producing, let's see here, NaNO3 Aq, so Na ions dissolved in water plus nitrate ions dissolved in water plus this stuff right here, the precipitate that does not dissociate, it does not break apart because it is not Aq, right? So it's insoluble in water. All right, so here is our complete ionic equation. And if we take a look, what do we have on the left-hand side of the arrow that is exactly the same as the right-hand side? Well, if we take a look, we have Na plus Aq here, Na plus Aq here. It looks like we have NO3 minus here, and we have NO3 minus here. And so we can leave those out of our net ionic equation. And typically when you write a net ionic equation, you list the positive ion first. So we end up with Ag plus Aq reacting with Cl minus 
a cube and this is going to end up producing your precipitate a g c l solid and we could put the pluses and the minuses right here for their ionic charges if we like or if you want you can leave those off that's not a big deal but they need to be here right here all right so that is your molecular equation your complete ionic equation and your net ionic equation and so if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and i really hope you guys found this helpful